Today we're going to do a shoot on this rather beautiful mid-80s Leica R3. It's probably the nicest camera I've had a chance to use on this series so far. So I'm going to do something a little bit more interesting and I might even get to do some outdoor lighting as well. So this is the camera that saved Leica. Prior to the release of this camera, the Leica M6 had sold very badly and the Leica Flex hadn't even broken even. So the company needed a hit. So they turned to the Japanese and they got into a collaboration with Minolta, taking the Minolta XE camera, rebadging it, putting a Leica shutter in it and a Leica metering system that allowed you to do area metering as well as spot metering. For the shoot this week, we decided to do something a bit more avant-garde. We'd managed to borrow some clothes from our favorite Icelandic designer. And I wanted to do a bit of fill-in flash to really bring the sky down and get some really moody, edgy results. So on first impressions, this camera doesn't really feel that much like a Leica. I'm an M3 and an M2 user, so I'm used to like a rangefinder cameras. This feels to me like a rebadge Minolta. It's still a very heavy, very solid, very quality feeling camera. It doesn't really have that Leica feel to me. The Simicon lens is fantastic as they always are. And being able to do spot metering and um, area metering on this little switch here is fantastic. There's a lever on the side here that allows you to close the viewfinder for long exposures. You can turn it on and off here, and you've got a nice little frame counter here. There's a couple of things about this camera though that are cause for concern when I first look at it. The first thing, if we open this up, is that on your take-up spool, you have another piece of plastic which you slide the film tab into. That's just another place for something to go wrong. As the camera ages, the plastic can become brittle and it can break. There's nothing wrong with having a slot on the take-up spool. The other thing is this window here. Windows in the back of cameras are never a good idea, especially on 35mm when you don't have a paper backing to the film. So anything that goes wrong here will cause light leaks onto your film. So that is a cause of concern. Apart from that, it's a very solid, very pretty camera and I'm really excited to use it. I thought the last location was all right, but I wanted to go back to the beach where all the shipwrecks were, because I thought it would be really cool. And I would try using the camera without doing mental gymnastics and finding my own exposure by actually using the exposure meter in the camera. But um, it's now raining. It's raining a lot. <laughs> so we're just eating Jaffa cakes in the car. <laughs> Am I just loading this camera wrong or do you really just have to jam that tab under that plastic thing and it comes out and it's really annoying? I mean, maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Um, leave me a notes in the comments. So it's sort of stopped raining for a minute, but when it does stop raining, the light is always amazing here. You've got these amazing sort of Turner skies. It's gone orange over there. And it's so bleak here, it's going to get some amazing shots with the Leica and the giant bird costume. <laughs> um, I'll just get down here. You know I said it had stopped raining? That was a lie. Well, you know that movie Dunkirk was a sequel, right? Well, she was in the original one. So she was one of the boats that went over there and picked people up. And... Uh, now she's a rotting mess on the side of the Medway. Now rotting on the shores of the Medway, Enna managed to save over a hundred soldiers during the evacuation of Dunkirk. Bye shipwreck. Bye bye. So we're going to go home, develop the pictures and see what we've got. 
but it would probably be a good time to tell you that I'm going to put an Amazon wish list up of film, just film. And if anybody wants to help these videos out by buying me a roll of film, I would be really, really grateful. Or you could buy me a towel, which would be really useful right now. So we've had a chance to get home and to dry off and I have developed the pictures and every single one of them has got a light leak on it. The light leak comes from that window at the back that I was worried about at the beginning of the video. There's a bit of foam around the window which seems to dry up or mess up over the years. It's not a difficult fix but it does mean that the pictures that I've just taken have got skid marks all over them. So things like this do sometimes happen with film because you can't see what you're doing as you're doing it. And there are two ways of looking at it. The first is that super analog cool man to have light leaks all over your pictures. That's just like the beauty of analog. It's so amazing. Um, it's so not digital. The other is um, bugger. The light meter, when I listened to it, was about two to three stops under. So it could be a calibration issue. Um, this isn't my camera and I did not test it quite as thoroughly as I might have tested one of my own. The fixes are not difficult. Um, you need to replace the foam around the window and that will fix the light leak or you could just put tape over it. Um, when I went online and did a bit more research into people using this camera, I noticed that there was a wonderful video by Analog Insights where he compares the XE to the R3 and he has shutter problems. Um, I've seen a lot of people complaining about a lot of different problems and it seems like as great as these cameras were when they came out they were very over engineered and this is working against them as they get older and I'm sure there's some of you that are going to be like I've had one of these since it was brand new I've looked after it and it works perfectly for me well that may be so but um, for my conclusion whether it's fair or not because this is obviously a faulty camera if a camera like this is prone to being temperamental, as a professional photographer, you have to bring home the shot or you're not gonna get work again, whether you're a wedding photographer who's got to shoot a bride or whether it's a big advertising campaign. And if you use a camera that has the potential to be this temperamental, then you're a very brave soul indeed. I'm so cold and wet. This would probably be a great time to tell you that if you like this video, you need to like, share, subscribe, smash that like button and find me a towel. Until next week, I'll see you in the next video.